Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Techie Code Buddy. I hope you all are doing extremely well. Well, guys, in this video, we are going to see two coding questions that were previously asked in Accenture exam. As guys, many of you were commenting me, were requesting me to make a video or make videos on Accenture coding questions. So this is the video. So before proceeding to this video, I would request you, if you haven't subscribed this channel till now, then do consider subscribing this channel as this really motivates me to make more such content for you. Okay. And also don't forget to turn on the bell icon so that you will never miss any update from my side. So this is the very first question. A startup wants to expand their empire. So the CEO decided to purchase plots at various locations. Okay. So there is a company uh, that wants to expand their business. And the CEO of the company uh, has already purchased plots on the different locations. Okay. Now he has already figured out some plots and now he is busy. Okay. So there are some plots figured out by the CEO. Now he is busy and he wants that you will select some plots that are square shaped. Okay, so whatever plots are in the square shape, you have to uh, count these plots. Okay, write a code to help your CEO for finding the all square shaped plots. So you have to count out the total number of square shaped plots. The question is pretty simple. Now let's see the input format. So the first line of input will have the total sorted shortlisted plots by the CEO. Then the next line will represent n separated integers denoting the area of plots. And output will be find out how many plots are there to build a new office. Now, how can we find that whether a plot is a square shaped or not? If the area of the plot is the perfect square number, then the plot will consider to have an office on them. Okay. So let's see the example. There are six plots shortlisted by the company CEO. And so the first plot has the area 64. The second plot has the area 16. The third plot has the area 38. The fourth plot, the fourth plot has the area 81. Then the fifth plot has the area 50. And the sixth plot has the area 100. Now, how many total plots are there to expand, the, expand your business? Okay, so how many numbers are the perfect square among out of them? 64 is the perfect square. Yes, it is 16, 81, and 100. So the output will be 4. This should be four, okay? This should be four by mistake. I print like three, this should be four. So the answer should be four. Now, how will we solve that? So guys, in this uh, question, we just need to find out that whether a number is perfect square or not. So how we can find that whether a number is perfect square or not. So if we will find out the square root of the number and then we will check whether the square root of the number into the square root of number will be equal to the number. It will be like perfect square. Or what we can do is we will check whether the seal value of that number and the floor value of that number are equal. Then it will be a perfect square. Okay. So first of all, we have to find out the square root. So what? how can we find the square root? So there is a built-in function in C++. Guys, I used to code in C++, so that's why I'm using the C++ language here, okay? So, there is a function, a square root, to find out the square root of a number, and it is a built-in function in C++, okay? So, suppose I have to find out the square root of 64. So, what will I write? I will write like this, and this will give me 8, okay? 8, 8 is 64, so this will give me the answer as 80. Now, let's check for the code part of this code. This is the code of that question. This is the array. And we are finding whether the numbers are perfect square or not. Okay. Then we will print here the total count of perfect squares. So how can we check whether a number is a perfect square or not? First of all, we have to pass our array as input and the length of the array. Okay. Then we will first initialize the count of plots is as zero. Okay. Then we will traverse the array. Let's check in this array. So this array is 64, 16, and 38. I'm taking only three elements. Okay, so it will be enough to tell you the logic. So what it is saying here, seal is a built-in function in C++ that will return the round of value, but it will return the greater value. Okay, what does seal mean? Seal means roof, means the upper boundary, means the upper boundary. So if 
let's take an example suppose i have to find out the seal value of 3.2 means i have to find out the round of value of it so if we if i have to find out the seal value so it will give me the upper value okay so the upper value of 3.2 will be 4 it will be 4 so this will give me 4 and what is floor floor is again a built in function which will return the round of value but the smaller value suppose i have to find out the floor value of 3.2 so this will give me 3 i hope it makes sense and it is clear to you so what will seal give c will return the round of value but the greater than the argument passed and floor will return the round of value but lesser than the argument passed i hope it makes sense and it is clear to you now we have done like how we can find whether a number is perfect square or not so we have to find out the square root of that number and then we will check whether the seal and floor value of that number are equal if these are equal then it will be a perfect square so we will increment the count by one and if it is not equal then we will again come into the loop and we will check for the next element in the array i hope it makes sense okay now we will run the loop for these elements so the at the very first time the loop will run for 64 now here we will have to find out the seal value of square root of 64 okay as the first element of the array is 64 so we will have to find out the square root of 64 so the square root of as i have already told you that this is the built-in method to find out the square root okay so this will return me 8 now we have to find out the seal value of 8 okay so we have to find out the seal value of 8 so the seal value of 8 will be 8 only as 8 is a whole number if a number is in decimal form or in floating point number then it will give like this okay so if if a number is already a whole number then it will remain same okay and also i have to find out the floor value of the of square root of 64 means 8 so also the floor value of 8 will be 8 now we will check if seal value and floor value are equal so these are equal so 8 is equal to 8 yes it is so we will increment the count by 1 now the count of floors is equals to 1 okay now again the i value will be incremented by 1 and then we'll check for the condition i is now 1 1 is less than the size of the length, size of the array. So, array size is 6. So, 1 is less than 6. The condition is true. We will come into the if part. Then, we will again check for the next element. Now, we will have we have to find out the seal value of the next element's square root. So, the next element's square root will be, next element is 16. So, what is the square root of 16? 16 square root is 4, right? Now we have to find out the seal and floor value of 4. So what will be the seal value of 4? It will be 4 only as 4 is the whole number. I am not saying 4 is the perfect square number. Okay. I am saying this time 4 is the whole number. So this will, uh, this will return the seal value as 4 only. We have to find out the floor value 2. So this will give me 4. Okay. Again, we will check whether they are equal. So, 4 is equal to 4. The condition is true. It will increment the count by 1. Now, this time the count will be incremented and it will become 2. Okay. Now, again, we will come here. I value will be incremented by 1. Now, I value is 2. 2 is less than 6. Yes, it is. Then we will again come into the if condition. And now, we have to find out the square root value of the next element. So, what is the next element this time? Next element is 30. First of all, we have to find out the square root of 30. So, 38, sorry. Square root of 38. Okay, so what will be the square root of 38 will be? It will be like 6.14 something. Okay, now we have to find out the seal value and floor value of 6.14. Here is a twist. Uh, keep watching this video. Here is a twist. Let me first erase some content. I'm erase from here okay yeah so what will be the seal value of 6.4 what will be the seal value of 6.4 so seal returns the greater value the greater round of value so it will return me 7 and if we find out the floor value of 6.4 
so it will return me the lower value or the lesser value okay so 6.4 floor value will be 6 only right it will be 6 now we will check if 7 equals to 6 so the condition is false this time and control will come out from the if part and will again for uh, increment the i value and i value will again check for the next element next element is 81 81 will be 81 square root is 9 okay i am telling already this time 81 is 81 square root is 9 so 9 floor value and seal value will be checked so both are equal as 9 is the whole number and the both value will be equal so the condition is true again count value will be incremented by 1 now this time count value is 3 okay again when the control will come here and it will check for the 50 so 50 is the square root is it will be like 7 point something okay and the floor value and seal value of 7 point something will be different one is one will become 8 and one will become 7 both are unequal so the condition will true and the control will come out of the if part again it will check for the next element next element is 100 and for 100 the square root of 100 will be 10 and the seal value and floor value of 10 will become 10 10 only both are equal this time count value will become increment by 1 and this time the count value will become 4 so the correct answer or the output of this question will become 4. So what was the twist? Twist was only there in the seal value and floor value. And why are we doing so? Why are we doing so? So we are checking here whether a number is a perfect square or not. A number is a perfect square only when both of the values, the upper value or the lower value in the form of round offs are equal. If they are equal, then the number will consider as as perfect square if they are not equal then the number will consider as not a perfect square okay so this is how the question will solve and i will put this code in the telegram group so make sure to join the telegram group i hope the logic part uh, you have understand properly if you have any doubts you can ask me for sure in the comment section or on the telegram group i will re-explain you okay so just make sure to re-watch this video first just make sure to make some logic on your own just make sure to dry run on your own if you are unable to do so then you can contact me anywhere on instagram on telegram or in comment section i will reply for sure i will re-explain okay so i hope this question is pretty clear this question was pretty clear and i hope it is clear to you so i can move to the next question now so let's move on to the next question so we have to find out the maximum element and its index a function accepts an array and length. Implement the function to find out the maximum element of array and print and print maximum element and its index. Okay. So in an array, you have to find out the maximum number and its position or its index. Okay. Suppose this is the array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You have to tell the maximum number and its index. So as we can see here, 7 is the maximum number. So we will return 7. And what is the index of it? Its index is 6. Why? Because the array is indexing start from 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so 6 will be the index of this. Uh, the next example is 23, 45, 82, 71. Now the maximum element will be 82 and the index value is 0, 1, 2. So 2 will be the index value of that. Okay, so 2 will be the correct answer. Now directly see the logic part and code okay so this is the code uh, this uh, we have taken this array and we have to find the maximum element we are calling here this function okay so the array the whole array will pass as the argument and the length of the array will pass okay now first of all uh, we as we have to return the maximum element so we will initialize the maximum element by some value okay so what is int min is the smallest possible value of an integer value okay it is the minimum value it is the minimum value no any other value can be minimum of this or can be lesser of this it is the it is the lowest value now uh, as we have to return index also so we are initializing index as zero now let's traverse the array and uh, we will check if the array element is greater than the 
maximum element so first of all we will consider like the maximum element present in the array is the minimum value what uh, whatever the value is it is like minimum okay so we will compare to the lowest value if we will find a number that is greater than to that minimum, uh, minimum value we will reassign the value okay so or if you are unable to understand it then you can make it here minus 1 okay so we can take it as minus 1 or you can take it as 0 but for integer uh, i am taking this as this is a good code okay now here we will check let's suppose in my array there are only three elements 2 4 and 5 so first of all the array will traverse here and the you know, control will come here so it will check for whether 2 is greater than i am taking here minus 1 okay for your uh, comfort zone so whether 2 is greater than minus 1 yes it is so now this time you have to assign or you have to store 2 2 in maximum okay now the maximum value is 2 and index value is as the 2's index is 0 so index value is 0 now again we will check for the next element so the next element is 4 and we will check if array of i so this time the next element is 4 so if 4 is greater than maximum so the updated value of maximum is 2 so if 4 is greater than 2 yes it is the condition is true so we have to reassign the value so now this time in maximum what will store so this will store array of i so this time array of i is 4 so maximum value will assign by 4 and the index value will be re-updated to index of 4. Okay, so what is the index of 4? Index of 4 is 0, 1. So index of 4 is 1. Now again, the, uh, the i's value will be incremented by 1 and it will go to the next element. Now check for 5. Whether if 5 or the current element is greater than the maximum element. So what was the last maximum element? It was 4. So whether 5 is greater than 4? Yes, it is greater than 4. So the condition is true and we will reassign or restore the value. So now this time maximum will assign 5. Okay. And index value will be re-updated. Now what is the index of 5? 5 index is 0, 1, 2. 2. Okay. Now uh, we have uh, completed with our array as I have, take this, uh, I have taken this array only. So now we have to print the maximum element and the index of that. So maximum element is now 5 and the index is 2. Okay, so this is the whole code. I will give this code in the Telegram community. So make sure to join the Telegram community. And this is all for today from my side. I, I hope both the questions both the and the logic of both the questions is clear to you. Okay, and still you have doubts, then what you can do is Leave your comment. I will reply for sure. Or you can join uh, me on Telegram or uh, follow me on Instagram. You can ask me there. I will reply for sure. Okay. So we will meet in the next video with the new question. So till then, keep preparing, keep exploring, keep practicing. Bye-bye.